What's up, everybody? It's CMY. Uh, we're back for another episode. I think this is episode nine now. Um, again, every episode I lose track of it, but whatever. Here we are again, back There's, for another time. Week. Isn't real during quarantine? Yeah, right. At all, I've completely lost it. But we're still I'm at here. episode March. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Christian, and you know I'm Mark. Um, and again, we're back for another episode. Uh, so to kick things off, I actually wanted to, to talk about my weekend um, since I actually got away. Um, from this void uh, that is my office the black hole um, of your house yeah right <laughs> yeah the house and the kids we actually got away from the kids too because um my wife and i's wedding anniversary is coming up soon so we decided to take a trip to the keys i think i mentioned it last episode so uh just came back from that on monday um i actually have a surprise um uh, that you know finally made a decision on on the the whole uh, Leica Chronicles or whatever you would call it, M10 Chronicles, and I picked up uh, an M10. So just a regular M10, didn't go for the P, but you know, finally, I'm so happy proud of you, did, Mark. So, so proud. As, yeah, yeah. As, as the episodes go on, people will realize that Mark will make M10 size decisions very easily. But <laughs> buying like a twenty dollar accessory for this camera will take him months. Yes, that, that is that is I the truth. Like, I feel like this kind of took him months, though. It, it took at least like eight weeks. It took eight episodes. He sold the M240 to then use the Fuji exclusively for a while and see if he actually wanted an M10. Meanwhile, three <laughs> days later, he got an M10. <laughs> well, I told you what, why that happened, not, or at least not, if not. I didn't, I'll, I'll tell everybody here. So what ended up happening was I boxed it up, and as you can probably recall from a couple episodes ago, and I actually just had it like on the shelf or somewhere in here. And one day I got bored. I was actually going to go take a walk with the kids around the neighborhood. And I was like, eh, let me just break it out one more time. And I actually took it out with the, the 35 color scope part, the F2.5 color scope part. I was like, all right, well, let me just grab something that I rarely use because I very rarely use that lens on, on digital. Um, and I was like, man, I was like, this is fun. I remember what this is like. I guess maybe, you know, leaving my house is all I need to do <laughs> to use it and, and enjoy it. Yeah, man. So I was like, your house is you know, key. Yeah, I mean, I'd already committed to selling it for whatever reason. I think that's what I told everybody to and whatever. It's like, hey, you know, either way, if I decide I'm going to keep a digital Leica, I still want to upgrade to an M10. If I decide I don't want it, then, you know, okay, I'll settle it and get rid of it, right? And just use the X100. So that just literally that little time away from using it and that little time using it, you know, and I put it right back in the box right after because it was, you know, still for sale. I was like, yep. I'm going to get an M10. So I just sat around and waited. I was being patient and it sold within the next couple of days. So I was like, I guess I'm going to get an M10. <laughs> so, it's a sign. So yeah. M10 is here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, funny enough, the guy who I sold it to um, actually found me on Instagram. And so he started following me and like he's been posting like crazy with it. I mean, you know, decent Hopefully stuff like I guess to shoot this podcast. Yeah, right. Just shooting around and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool to see because he actually has the same um, 35, min- eh, 35 millimeter Ultron uh, Voigtlander lens that I had. So it's like, it's like, yeah, hey, look, you know, similar combo. He's just using it. So that, that was kind of cool to see. It's like, you know, my old camera being put to good use. So treated me well. Wait, so, did you, you sell know. it with the Ultron? No, 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 no. He had that already uh, before. Got it. So. Got it. You know what he actually did have or does have? He has a GR3. So that's like oh. his, I guess, pocket camera. So Yanni's, he's a, Yanni's he's a man of taste. <laughs> Yanni's little yeah. friend. The uh, GR3 yeah. is a super cool camera. I yeah. have thought about buying one, but I, as you guys know, I am at my limit with cameras, yeah. at least for the time being. You for could definitely, you could being. hide this one very easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. there's just other things that I need. Like I am dying to buy a boringly enough a bunch of c stands so that i can put up some lights or some backgrounds and stuff um and i don't have that gear and it's expensive as hell uh i want to buy some lights hopefully some pro photo stuff um i want to get some more lenses maybe i want to buy a new uh, 90 millimeter hopefully the the sl sumicron is in my near future if my wife doesn't divorce me (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah that's why a new camera is just not besides isn't the the gr3 uh 28 millimeter yeah right but it's a crop sensor isn't it 
Yeah, Hold it's on. 18 mil. So it's what, like a 30? Oh, got it. Okay, so it's yeah. a, around the 28. I, I have a, sorry, Christian, I have a starred, yeah. you just said all of this right now, but I have a starred message on WhatsApp from our group chat that <laughs> says, it's from May 19th, 2020. Christian, I can't see myself buying any other Leica shit that I actually need. <laughs> well, I don't need anything else, that's for sure. I can I can safely say that I don't need anything. Uh, the funnier question is, why do you have that do star? I want some stuff? Because I knew this would happen. He's a smart guy. Oh, he God. got me. But I don't. I really don't need anything else. Like in terms yeah. of like kit to work with, in terms of what I'm doing now professionally, I don't need anything else. I yeah. have like flashes and enough lenses. I'm not gonna like if I get a 90, it's not gonna be a lens that I use predominantly. Uh, it's just I love that focal length and I want it for my SL2. So, yeah. Funny enough, like I, I still sometimes wish or hope a GR3 would work out for me. Um, I tried a GR2 and it was just I, the autofocus just wasn't fast enough to keep up with the kids and you know mm-hmm. like fast type shooting. It just it just didn't. Um, but for the form for, and even if even though I don't particularly like cameras that don't look like cameras, you know like and like like as like fujis whatever it is right um i could deal with it because of just you know the pocketability and the convenience i mean i took the gr2 to seattle for a work trip and it was just super convenient just had it in in my pocket or side of a jacket or something and just like the x100 it was just that much more convenient but it's just the autofocus just wasn't there for me but i really i i'm hoping one day that something in that kind of form factor with that kind of feature set comes out with faster autofocus maybe a GR4 or something. And I think I would possibly get rid of the X100 for that because that's really what the X100 serves for me now is like a pocketable or almost pocketable um, compact camera that can, you know, sort of pull double duty if I don't, you know, take the Leica or I travel and I don't want to take the Leica or any of the Leicas or a bigger camera like the X-T3 or something. So like, I think I was telling Mark yesterday, if you put a gun to my head and tell me you have to like, you get to keep one camera and just one camera, it's the GR3. I'll yeah. get rid of everything else. That GR3 is the perfect camera. That's kind of how I feel about the Q2. It's I really it, love my Q2 a lot. And it's in my hand, I think, now more than any of my other cameras. Um, I feel weird if I don't pick it up for like a couple of days. And I don't really care too much about size. That, I, in that's fact, the problem. I, I, in fact, kind of... I like bags. I like camera bags. So it's like the perfect excuse to just use a different camera bag, I guess. Like for yeah. me, the, the thing with the GR is it's so small. Yeah, the Q, I have the Q also. So the Q is the GR on steroids. It's a GR with IBIS. Well, the GR3 has IBIS too. But it's a GR with an F1.7 lens. Freaking amazing. Full frame. Full yeah. frame too. But the GR, it, I literally never leave my house without it. It's always on me. And you can't even tell because it's just... I just slide it into my pocket and I walk out of the house and it's always on me in some way. I definitely see the, you know, I get it. I get it. And like half the time, half the times I won't use it, but it's there and it doesn't bother me because I'm not carrying a camera. I'm not carrying a bag. It's just another thing in my pocket. So if I use it, I use it. If I don't, whatever. And nothing happens. I only got the Q2 because, sorry, Mark. Uh, I only got the Q2 because well i wanted the sensor size or the sense the megapixel size sorry to match with my sl2 um and i felt like it was like the perfect match to the sl2 but also because i came up whether it was made up or not i told myself and i thought i had a conversation with my wife that she was going to carry the q or the qp i should say uh which is what i had first and i would carry the q2 like for vacation and travel and stuff which outside of COVID, we do pretty often. Um, so at the very last wedding we did, actually, uh, I handed her the QP during the wedding. Mind you, she's not a photographer. She normally does not shoot during weddings at all. Uh, but I said, I didn't have a second shooter with me at the time. And I said, here, just hold this just in case, like you see something or whatever. And like, I just, I kind of did it so, sh- so that she could like shoot, and play with it and practice or whatever. And we get home and funny enough, I'm like looking through that wedding. Now I'm about to finish it. 
and some of my favorite images from the wedding are ones that she took with the QP. And I'm just like, dude, why don't why don't you do this more often? You don't get oh, it. we're like four <laughs> we're like four or five months away from Christian doing nothing. <laughs> Your wife is shooting the weddings now too. Like that's it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> just using oh, my yeah. name. Yeah. It's yeah. like that's I just crazy. trademark my name. <laughs> that's, nuts. that's goals, bro. Goals. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to kill me for saying this. Definitely. Does she listen? I, I really hope she doesn't watch this episode. She she <laughs> says that supposedly she listens in on what we talk about, but I have headphones on, so she can't hear you guys. She can only hear me <laughs> talking shit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I, I again, I, I think everything Yanni said about the GR is why I wish it would work. And I still do. Trust me. Like, I, I still think about it sometimes. Like, man, that would really be the right thing because – Again, you know, autofocus, being able to get closer up with the kids and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I, you know how much I love the X100. I think I love it, again, equally as the M10 or even the 240 mm -hmm. before, just as a great camera, you know, to do photography stuff. But as a casual, something better than your phone, you know, to shoot with and, you know, again, throw it in a pocket or a bag or something or just forget about it. it you know, yeah, I, I, I wish it would work. So and don't we'll get me wrong. One it's day. It's not the best camera. It's just the most, yeah, the best camera to carry with you every day. Like I pick up yeah. the XH1, and two seconds in, I'm like, oh my god, this thing actually focuses on things. The focus yeah. is a million times better on the XH1. I pick up the Q, and I look at, I just take a photo of anything. I look at, I'm like, this is the most beautiful photo I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, and that's like, it. <laughs> that to me takes priority over size, compactness. Uh, if, you even usability, like, because the M10 is not an easy camera to use, but when I use my M10, I look at the images. I'm like, that's one of my best images ever. It, but if I don't have the camera on me, I'm not making a photo with it. Yeah. That, that's that's the main exactly one. the thing. So just yeah. get, get more camera bags. No, I hate carrying a bag. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like that. That's exactly like for me too, which is why I actually got the X100 again and, and even you know, the M10 is that I just, I keep one of the cameras to get smaller without having to go micro for thirds. Basically that's what I'm looking for. Like something small up that I'll, I won't mind carrying it and, you know, sure if I use it or not, whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that's why the GR I think is a, is a great camera or again, even the X100 because they are small enough that they really just don't get in the way or, you know, don't get away of regular stuff. Like I, right now I actually just have the X100 with, um, uh, a filter on the front of it that almost matches like the stock profile. So it's, you know, still pretty slim. And I actually tucked it in my pocket earlier, test it out. And that's how I intend to keep it now that I have the M10 and that's, I wouldn't say my main camera, but yeah, my main camera. Right. And I'll keep mm. the, the X100 for if I'm going out and I just want to carry something light and not worry about it. I've actually left the X100 in my car. I know you do this with the GR uh, sometimes Yanni, but left the X100 like in my glove box and completely forgot about it. Cause it just stashes away in there. Right. You know? Oh, I lost my GR the other day. Like for like two or three days the other day and it was, it was under some papers <laughs> like that's how small the thing is i'm like oh there you are like i was Those freaking out like where did you i need, need to this stop thing? losing things yeah i can't believe i lost this yeah, there's right. the film now a it's, camera oh my gosh blame it yeah. on the coronavirus how much how much is that thing by the way isn't the new one like the gr bucks or something? yeah 900 like eight or nine yeah eight or nine yeah oh, yeah 900 bucks pretty affordable yeah. for like what it is it's not bad um it's, yeah I think the first time I heard of it was watching Samuel Street Life yeah. on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And I was intrigued with it. It's really interesting. It's a really interesting camera. I don't like that it has a viewfinder. Uh, I mean, it that doesn't, doesn't have, have one. one. Yeah. Um, and I don't like that it's uh, f not full frame. Yeah. But that's what makes full, it so, both of those things is what makes it dog, so small. Full frame yeah. for life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love my my Fuji crop sensors. That's probably the only crop sensor camera like I'll bother buying again. Beside or the GR, the Fujis are over the GR. That's really oh, it. actually, I'm only going up from here. You know who got a uh, GR? My Carlos, day, probably. No oh, word. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yo, shout out to Tinta Cafe. <laughs> my favorite my favorite Miami spot. If anyone's watching from outside of Miami and you ever come to Miami, you need to go to Tinte Cafe. Like it's a must have. The coffee yes. is spectacular. Everything on the menu is spectacular and the people that work there are awesome. So uh and definitely they make the best pastelitos in Miami. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, and honestly, like everything they make there is the, the best, best traditional Miami. pastelitos in Miami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the co- the coffee is really what gets you, man. You have a yeah. picado, and I was about to say that. Yeah, man, you have co- it's coffee with um, coffee and more coffee, evaporated milk and milk. condensed milk. Con- yeah, Jesus, yeah, and regular milk, I think too. And so, reg- uh, yeah, and regular yeah. milk. It's got all three and milks. A side of heart heart got- palpitations. Okay, got it. Picado yeah. is Spanish for sin. Yeah, for so, yeah, it's the the coffee is oh, literally yeah. called the sin. Yeah, that's funny. That's hilarious. Um, Dude, Yanni, aren't you going? You're going on a trip, aren't you? This weekend? Next week? Yeah, we're going to the. Well, tomorrow we're leaving to the Keys. Well, okay. it's not really a trip. My in laws have a house in the Keys, so we go back and forth pretty often, but I've been dying to get another house. So, yeah, it's a trip. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going through the. Every time we go over there, I'm like, I go all the time. I'm going to take like one camera. <laughs> I knew this is what he I'm, was going to say. I'm going to do it this time. I want to take one camera, and that's it. I currently have my uh, my Peak Design 20 liter bag packed with an Osmo <laughs> Pocket, a GoPro Max, oh an M6, God. the GR3, and I'm thinking about putting the M262 in there too. <laughs> yeah. Put the oh, yeah. In and, here, man. Oh, and don't forget. No. D- don't, don't do that to me. Oh, yeah. And the map. <laughs> because you forgot about it? Yeah. You and the Mavic Pro too. The yeah. Take the cue, man. And there's also the, the drone, Q. so. Take the cue and take only the cue and then talk to me. That would be, the that's Q actually the. Such a probably good best travel you, camera. No, like you're, you're hundred percent right. Because with the cue, if we go for a walk at night, I could still use the cue because it's f 1.7 full frame IBIS. It'll yep. work. Yep. I could use it on, I could take my tripod, use it to do like astrophotography because it's a 28 millimeter F 1.7. Mm, yeah. There's actually. I watched a YouTube video on that recently. The Q is not the best astrophotography. Because it has noise reduction that I think you can't turn off when um, you go really fast. Not but. just that, but it's also controlling the shutter speed after a certain below. What is it? Hold on. I have my keys through here. So after one second, you have to do it with the app. And then even then it's kind of like finicky. I don't know. I used, when I did the last time I did astro, astrophotography in Wisconsin, I did, I used my SL2 because it was like, I thought about it too, to use my Q2, but the SL2 is just way better for that. Yeah, well, it, all the astro I've ever done, I've done, damn, wait, I should take the X-H1. I have a 24 <laughs> millimeter on that. <laughs> just take all of your cameras. That way, if your bag gets stolen, you're left with nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, with the re- what you might have in your neck. The reason I always end up taking all my cameras is because I'm always afraid of somebody breaking into my house and being left with nothing. Really? Do you so I'm like, it's way, safe. Honestly, it's safe that's like to a legit on feeling me. that I have sometimes too. Yeah. That I'm like, like if I, it, but it's it's both ways. Like I'm like I'm gonna take this, and if my stuff gets stolen while I'm out, I'm gonna be left with nothing. But if I'm out, and my house gets broken into, which be which would actually be really difficult because I have hurricane windows, so. To bring yeah, into my house would be extremely difficult, but still the fear is there. Like if I my house gets broken into and they steal my cameras, then I'm gonna be left with nothing except for what I have on me. Yeah, it's, which, not, it's not like a honestly, valid fear. Enough. Like I usually have the SL2 and the Q2 on me, which is literally enough. That's what I usually work with. I shoot weddings with that. I shoot portrait sessions with that. So that's really all I need for work. But still, it would be devastating to lose like my mini lux for sure. If my mini lux disappear, it'd be so sad. Um, and uh what else do oh my m10 if my m10 disappeared i think i'd be like captain sad boy just trying to go fund <laughs> me for yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 really I, I, I i i think it's easier for me these days to i know we talked about this like when first episodes and i realized after after i said it that um i do actually tend to go out with one camera and one lens these days like even traveling, it's usually, you know, the X100 or, you know, the Leica M or something. And usually I don't take more than one lens just because I don't want to have to keep switching it. That was one thing I got really exhausted by traveling, you know, years before. But other than maybe scenarios where I might take a drone, I mean, I've kind of pared down so much that it, it's like, okay, pick one and that's what you're taking. You know, I took only the M10 to, to the keys. I wasn't thinking like, okay, let me take the M6. Maybe I want to shoot film today or whatever. And then maybe, you know, digital rest or the X100 and film. Like, it's just like, all right, I'm going to take one of these things 
and that's it. The, I did actually consider the Nikon L35 AF just because I'm like, if I wanted to shoot film and, I, and kind of have it as a yeah. just in case, that's the one, right? Because that's the GR3 of, of film cameras for me. Right. It's a little bulkier, oh, but you that's know. how I feel about the mini so, looks yeah. too. So, uh, but it's the what ifs that get you, and I'm sure Yanni feels the same way. So I got this 15 cameras with him, like I do. <laughs> so I got this uh, camera strap now that's to like ride bike with, so it's like stabilized and it holds the camera on your back, so you could ride with oh, it, it without. So, yeah, yeah, I got it. Which one is? But it? I'm like, it's from Metal Cycling. It's like a cross shoulder, like cross body strap, and then I it has a sta- this. stabilizing. Metal cycling, and what's the name of the? M e t t l e. Oh, got it. Okay, hold on. I spelled metal like heavy metal. M E T T L E. Okay, yeah. and then metal cycling. And what's just like camera strap? Yeah, just Google that. Speed strap. Yeah, the speed strap, I think it's called. Yeah, speed strap. Sweet. Oh, here it is. Yeah. It's just like a crossbody, like stabilized strap, but I'm like, what camera do I put on this? I tried the XH1 because <laughs> it's like the only weather seal thing I have. And this thing weighs a ton. So I'm thinking that, that looks like it would th- like the the camera would just bounce around and break on your bike. Hey, look at that! It's no, because something. Yeah, it's an XT. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an XT too. Like yeah, well, when you're on the you is it on a road bike? Yeah, and on the road bike, you're not really bouncing around. You're it's super stable. It's which one did you get? That one right there, the blue which one. Which one? That's oh, the only nice. one they had in, and it's the only one they had in stock. Yeah, so. the purple purple is the only one they have in stock now. But no, the black got... and white one is super nice. Yeah, that hasn't Actually, been in stock I forever. I like the silver one. Hasn't been in stock forever. Dude, why do, they, why do people do that? Like, as a business, like, if you have a product that's super popular, make more of it, dude. Like, what are you <laughs> doing? Why would you not want to make more money? I don't understand. But I, I got that thing. That's so frustrating. And I'm actually thinking about putting the cannonet on it. Because <laughs> oh I'm like, I don't care. really care. Yeah, I don't care that and much of it breaks. That, the film camera? Yeah. Like the Q3 thing? QL, yeah, QL3 or QL3. You QL have three. one of those? Three yeah. or whatever. I had you made one fun of me for You made fun of me for having it once a long time ago. <laughs> oh, when well, we barely no, knew each other. Of you. I didn't make fun of you. I called it the poor man's Leica, which I did not coin the term for that camera. For oh, that. I know. That's, no, you're like, that's an internet thing. Someone on the internet made that up. That, that yeah. Canon... Well, uh, Wait, what is it? The Canon, Canon at uh, Canonet, QL3, Q17, QL3. QL3 yeah, or like that. right. Uh, yeah. That it's the poor or, man's Leica. I had yeah. one um, and I gifted it to a friend because uh, he wanted a film rangefinder camera. And I I got that before I got my M3. Uh, so I gifted him that and I got the M3. I really like, like I enjoy the camera. It's a good size. It's fun I to like use. It too. I actually like I, that camera a lot. I got the actual little adapter that brings the voltage to the right thing so the meter works properly. I didn't know. You, I don't. I didn't even rem- remember that you had that. You have. I feel like you have all the cameras. <laughs> Do you have any Nikon cameras? Had. I had a Nikon something. a long time ago. That was my first DSLR. Okay. Yeah. No, my no, only no, like DSLR. Oh, no, sorry. My only DSLR. No. You don't. You don't have any Nikon film stuff. You know that I've been meaning to during all of quarantine. This is something that I've told myself several times, and I've never done it up until now is putting all my cameras together and taking like a photo of it somehow. I, I'm so sick of like the overhead shots, like put it on the floor, put it on a table and like just overhead, yeah. like it's so way. done. Like, yeah, like a flat lay. I mean, I get it. It's a good way to, to kind of show what you have, but oh my God, like come up with another. I would almost rather build a set and like <laughs> put each camera like on a pedestal of some kind or something. I don't know. Make it interesting, yeah. man. The flat lay is done. Let's end the flat lay with, with COVID. The flat lay's canceled. <laughs> flat lay's canceled. Hashtag flat lay's canceled. <laughs> Funny oh enough, like I, with with weddings, like you kind of you ha- kind of have to do that when yeah. the bride especially has like so many details, like the shoes, the rings, and the earrings, and the necklace, and the, the thing that grandma gave her, and the thing that mom gave her, and the whatever, and the invitations, and the flowers and you got to pull all this stuff together and then you only got five minutes to take photos of everything you're like flatly it is <laughs> like, <laughs> meanwhile the groom has shot. shoes bow tie and cufflinks, uh, and, and, cufflinks. And, and the watch yep. yeah that's it yeah simple yeah
easy always grooms are dude it's always so funny because like i find myself having the same conversations over and over at weddings uh, and it's always like one of the conversations is how quickly grooms get ready it's legit like five minutes like they'll be at the pool till like let's say the ceremony's at 4 p.m they'll be at the pool till like three and then the girls would be getting ready from like 7 a.m and then run late for the 4 p.m yeah. ceremony mm -hmm. it's Jeez. crazy like the hardest part for me was finding somebody to tie the bow tie. Yeah. Oh it's my like, god, that's the only thing. Yeah, my my second shooter, our associate Ozzy, who is phenomenal as a person, as a photographer, he's just like the best. He constantly gets stuck with that dilemma. <laughs> so I think he actually <laughs> learned how to do it on YouTube already because he's just like, so, "This is I could do it now, but so. it took a while." This yeah. is gonna keep happening. The freaking bow tie dilemma nobody knows yeah. how to tie a bow tie i and i honestly think that they just should stop selling like real bow ties and just sell the clip-ons like only no no but clip -ons no. only allowed no never no why, why would you say that no because dude it's such like nobody knows how to do it nobody you yeah, so you learn the only person and then when it's all crooked and sideways everybody knows you have a real bow tie <laughs> that's the thing when they're real they don't even sit right dude like it's yeah horrible. that's the point how would everybody how would anybody know it's not a real bull tie it's not good for me when i'm looking at my portraits and it's yeah, like the groom's like <laughs> that's like me a crooked bow tie no propeller okay. let's oh go <laughs> yeah no nah, man they need to just only oh sell God. clip ons you know that clip reminds me only. like i talk about pictures like I, I every now and then i'd go through my wedding pictures and stuff and i think we have a book that got made i think we did i don't know i, I can't remember now. I, th I thought we did actually i think it's for our engagement pictures because i was like man where you should you if you don't have a book of your wedding photos you 100 percent should yeah like, well I that just that's show something you. that is so important and it's like a family heirloom that you can hand down or like give mm -hmm. to someone else like make a second copy and gift it to your parents or your in-laws or whatever they make great gifts. They make great coffee table books. Like that's just something that needs to be in the house. hundred percent. And where could somebody hire a photographer that makes these Christian? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on the topic of Figure books, because I, I, I really don't know if we did. I know that there's an engagement one I just saw recently, but whatever. But on the topic of books, I actually picked up two books as well. They were. Oh, so, so did I. I guess they're. I so know. did I. What's the freaking distinction these days with, a zine versus a book. I mean, I know what it feels like, but it's like, why well, make distinction? So I picked up two. I'm going to guess uh, it's the, the hardness of the cover. Yeah. But no. So the first because, one. No, because I would consider, I would consider Joe Greer's book, a book. Yet the um, Enoch Contreras and Pat Kiernos did a book or a zine, sorry, called 48 Hours in Havana. And it's a zine because they called it a zine. But I think yeah. it could be considered a book. But the, I, it, I, it's just marketing. Like if they yeah. call it a zine, it's a zine. Zines, I, I think, are, I mean, zines are cool. I think it's the medium itself. But in any case, I mean, I haven't looked through them all. But yes, this is I Love You Know I See from Joe Greer. Um, his Instagram handle is like I O Greer G R -E I O E Greer. Yeah, I O E. Basically Joe, but with an I instead of the, the O. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> instead of the J. Wow. I just, okay. Wow. I, I had no idea that's what it was. <laughs> His name is oh, Joe. You're, you're being, wait, he's, is he being sarcastic -E. again? <laughs> no, I'm not. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Like um. So yeah, and and these guys here, I think I think they're local too here in, in Florida. But um, yeah, both pick these both up today and um. I oh, really love that that book, I don't know if yours did, Mark, but mine came with a personally written note in an envelope, a thank you card. I thought that touch yeah, right that there, nice touch. if I ever make a book or a zine or a, whatever, a <laughs> memoir, <laughs> <There it is. laughs> yeah. I'm going to hopefully, you know, if, if, if time permits, I'm going to, I would love to write like, personalized notes at least to like some people that i know for a fact are gonna buy it and like really love it yeah. just that is such a that personal touch is amazing the, like the customer service level of that is top notch guys yeah so speaking of has have either of you i mean I, i'm gonna say i have because I, I i got inspired by again one of my favorite photographers six years don't to do it but have either of you made any 
uh, books, zines, publications, whatever you want to call it, with any of like your photos, maybe from like a set, even if it's just for travel stuff. Um, guys- I have a set of, of some photos that I made last year. Mostly, most of them I made last year. I think there are some from the year before. Uh, and I've been meaning to make some kind of book out of it or maybe a zine or something. Um, maybe that's a project I need to put together. But up to now, I have not. At least I have the idea, though. I made some a while back. Like when I first started, I would make like every six months or might have been 12 months. I would make a book just documenting what I shot before that. But that went by the wayside super quick. Now I'm actually yeah. been contemplating. I kind of want to put together a People Little Havana book. I just got to start putting off feelers to see if it's something that people actually want it. Dude. I can tell you right now, people actually want that. (laughs) Yeah. I want that. (laughs) I'm sure Mark wants that. Sold one. And uh, I think that you have an upper hand when it comes to branding in Miami because Little Havana is such an important staple of Miami Mm. that if you like use that brand to your advantage and make a book about little Havana, like a photography book about little Havana, it will do really well. And I think that you should 100% do that. that yeah. It's been in the back of my mind for a while. I just have to go through like 70,000 pictures and find what, yeah. 30. You're preaching to the choir. Yeah. I Actually that I have, I mean, I guess you could call it a project, but obviously I've been documenting the hell out of my kids growing up and stuff like that. And, you know, you talk about like heirlooms and stuff like that. I've been thinking about making, you know, chapters. My kids are a year and a half apart in age, but I've been thinking about like maybe doing like, you know, age zero to like five being like one chapter. Right. And then creating a book like hardcover and everything. And then continuing on until maybe like it turned 18 or something and have maybe like, you know, different chapters of volumes of books Mm -hmm. and have that as just, you know, that's how I've, you know, keep memories instead of like the traditional, like individual prints and sticking it in a photo album. Um, that's like a long, super long-term project. If you will, I have in mind personal project. Obviously I wouldn't sell as pigs of my kids, but that's something that I've been toying with the idea of because I have a separate account, um, for them called two little winters that is, it's purely just black and white photos of the kids and, you know, family, um, with the kids involved, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not private on it recently. Huh? I feel like you haven't Megan? posted on that in forever. Uh, probably like a couple of weeks, probably before I went to the keys. Um, but nice. no, I still, I still keep up with it. And, and the funny thing is like, you know, yeah, I like street stuff and yeah, travel and everything else like that. But when I stop and think about it, like, I feel like I'm most um, picky, if you will, with the stuff that I put there funny enough, because there's not this, I'm not trying to like garner any attention. So like, I really think about, okay, well, what image am I going to put and what, what, what's the thought, the feeling, the emotion behind the picture and, you know, why did it, what was going on when I took it and, you know, what it means to me, uh, won't mean anything to anybody else. So I'm, I'm like super picky. I don't post a whole lot on it. It's not like every week or something like that. It's just, yeah. you know, whenever I get a chance to go back through stuff, I took pictures of and I'm like, yeah, okay. I remember this afternoon here and, you know, I remember what was going on or this picture or something. So, um, but yeah, like that's what I intend to do. Um, back to like the book thing. I actually did make a book in 2018. Um, I made it on blurb just for myself, if you will. Um, because I, same thing like Yanni, right? I wanted to kind of document like the year, just the stuff I did, like when I was shooting street stuff. So I have it. It's actually on my shelf there. Um, the blurb, blurb stuff was actually pretty decent. Um, it was really expensive to make one book, of course, right? For yourself. But I figured that's something else I want to continue doing as well. I just honestly haven't sat down to figure out what I want to put in it because it does take work to do that. Um, I yeah. feel like I'm I'm really harsh on myself about making a book though. Like um, sometimes I feel like I have all these photography books and some of them are really, truly incredible. Like, I mean, honestly, that the 48 hours in Havana really hit a spot for me like that was i mean my family i have cuban family and i live in miami where it's like cuba is a big thing you know what i mean cuba is a big theme here in miami it's a big topic uh that's constantly discussed and like these guys went over there and did it in a way that i felt was not pretentious or like presumptuous uh 
and and then made a book out of it and the book is so good the foot the work is so good uh and then and then it was kind of like an homage to the people of cuba and i feel like a lot well since like americans have been able to travel to cuba openly which hasn't been for very long maybe what, what like three years four years yanni yeah would you say the open travel like the easy travel has been yeah. since 2014 i think 2014 yeah so six yeah, years yeah. uh which is not i mean not a long time um i feel like there's a lot of just uh showiness and like going there out of like trend or mm-hmm it's just a little bit of a lack of respect. I feel that of, of some mm-hmm. work that I've seen coming out of Cuba. Um, and these guys really did it right. So, so I feel that sometimes my work isn't personal enough in that regard to make it to a book. I like, I, I'm just hard on myself about it. Like I know that it doesn't have to be about anything or whatever. Like I get it, but I, I, I almost like being hard on myself because it just pushes me to do better and, and be a better photographer and hopefully do better work. Um, and I just don't feel like my work is, is up to par to put in a book until I, I really hone in on, on a project or make it really personal or find a topic that, that will at least knowingly touch people, like, you know, like get to people the way that that book got to me. Yeah, I agree it's one of those things like you'll probably never feel ready. So at some point yeah. you just have to get it done. Yeah, that's true too. I, I mean, like in your case, I just think that the, the body of work that you have is so solid and like the place is so concrete that it would just do so well to make it in like it would it would ease well into being a book yeah. meanwhile personally i don't think it's ready that's yeah because i would never think it's ready so that's why yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm just like i just gotta get it done mm-hmm. yeah well for me just you know one last note that i guess on the idea of a project book or even just specific to to little havana i think when there's context around like what it is that you know the work is tied to for instance like the joe greer book right is i love you nyc where it's like basically shots of, of new york and i mean that's probably kind of cliche because street photography in new york are kind of done to death but mm-hmm. there's a bit of context to it so i feel the same thing for like little havana it's like well it's tied to little havana and it's specific to that and i don't think a lot of there there are books on little havana and you know photographers that have done stuff but i feel like this is probably has a chance to be you know pretty successful you know it's well received, so. if you will. Hopefully. I think so, man. I really think that that's something. Would you do a soft cover or hard cover? Probably soft. Okay. Easier. Why? For and just to, to bring the price down? Bring the price down like and to drop ship accessible. it. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And probably not even what Joe Geary did. Like, I'll probably have it drop shipped somehow. Yeah. Make it super easy. Yeah. Yeah. But, dude, you know, like in terms of the physical book like mine got damaged on the way in here we go uh so if you guys can see right there um which is my issue with sending soft cover books like i think they're pretty and i think that he did an amazing job with his but like if you're going to send a soft cover book put it in a hard cover cardboard box <laughs> Or like some sort of protector. Like maybe I would like put it in like some sort of like plastic container or something. I mean. How did that come? Like in an envelope or? Yeah, it just came in an envelope. Yeah, no. But it was a a thick envelope with like two like sandwich between some cardboard. Even even, has to come in a cardboard box. That's probably definitely worse. But this uh, this also came today. My my, the this monthly of LFI. Dude, my mailman like annihilated this thing i'm surprised like it's in one piece like i i opened my mailbox and it was like jammed in my mailbox like folded like all messed up and like it's got creases all over it you can't really see it but it's got creases all over it and i'm just like dude that happens with almost all of my lfis the steve mccurry edition which was like one of my favorite ones 
is the most damaged. It got damaged by rain. It was all wet when I got it. So I had to like let it sit out and dry. It was, dude, like mailmen do not care about your photo book, man. So like package it well. If you do a soft cover, package it well because it matters. Like it sucks that I don't, I have this book that I've been waiting on for months. Uh, and and I've been really excited about because I'm a huge fan of Joe. Uh, now I have a damaged copy. And now like, what am I going to do? I'm not going to return it to Joe to get another one. Like, you know, I just. Right. Yeah. No, just ship it in a box. Yeah. Ship yeah. it in a box. And on that note, speaking about package it, packaging it well, um, I think we really wrap, guys. So yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? That didn't work out well for, for <laughs> the, the closing. It, it was a valiant effort. <laughs> please give us a like and a subscribe. Please. Yeah, and please give me tips on how to wrap a podcast. <laughs> Not saying corny <laughs> shit like that. That was bad. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hate that, but yeah, I'll, I'll live with it. I'll I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna do what Yanni did to me. I'm gonna star this episode, <laughs> cut it out, and in ten years when we're YouTube famous, I'm gonna come back to this. It's like, like let's time. package it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Speaking of packaging, let's wrap this episode up. <laughs> that was, that was. You know what that was? That's the dad in you. That was a yeah, yeah, dad, yeah. dad joke. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that was good, man. Was anyway, good. this has been fun. <laughs> thanks, so. thanks for listening, guys. Um, also follow our Instagram that I swear to God I'm going to post on this week or next yeah <laughs> so i will post yeah. give us give us a follow um on the instagram at cmy.cast and if you have any questions or any topics you guys want to hear about let us know and um if you want to be on the podcast let us know we're like looking to find some guests and stuff so True. yes cool great to see you guys see you guys next week all right later. bye guys later bye.